The Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning Hamelin Towns in Brunswick by famous Hanover City The river Wesser, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spied, but when begins my ditty? Almost five hundred years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats! They fought the dog and killed the cats, and bit the babies in the cradles, and eat the cheeses out of the vats, and licked the soup from the cook's own ladles, split open the kegs of salted sprats, made nests inside men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last the people, in a body, to the town hall came flocking. "'Tis clear," cried they, "'our mayor's a noddy, and as for our corporation, shocking. They think we buy gowns lined with ermine, for dolts that can't or won't determine what's like to rid us of our vermin. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking, to find the remedy we're lacking, or sure as fate we'll send you packing. At this the mayor and corporation quaked with mighty consternation. An hour they sate in council, at length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I'd my ermine gown sell, I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I've scratched it so, and all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should hap at the chamber door but a gentle tap? Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation, as he sate, looking through the wondrous fat, only a scraping of shoes on the mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go pitter-pat. Come in, the mare cried, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His queer long coat from heel to head was half of yellow and half of red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes each like a pin, and light loose hair, yet swarthy skin, no tuft on cheek nor beard on chin, but lips where smiles went out and in. There was no guessing his kith and kin, and nobody could enough admire the tall man and his quaint attire. Quoth Mount One, it, it's as my great-grandsire, starting at the trump of doom's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced to the council table and, Please, your honours, said he, I'm able, by means of a secret charm to draw all creatures living beneath the sun that creep or swim or fly or run after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they noticed round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of the selfsame check, and at the scarf's end hung a pipe. And his fingers they noticed were ever straying, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe 
as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled yet said he poor piper as i am in tartary i freed the cham last june from his swarms of gnats i eased in asia the nizam of a monstrous brood of vampire bats and as for what your brain bewilders if i can rid your town of rats will you give me a thousand guilders one fifty thousand was the exclamation of the astonished mayor and corporation into the street the piper stepped smiling first a little smile as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet pipe the while then like a musical adept to blow the pipe his lips wrinkled and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled and ere three shrill, th shrill notes the pipe uttered you heard as if an army muttered and the mumbling grew to a grumbling and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling and out of the house the rats came tumbling great rats small rats lean rats brawny rats brown rats black rats grey rats tawny rats grave old plodders gay young friskers fathers mothers uncles cousins cocking tails and pricking whiskers families by tens and dozens brothers sisters husbands wives followed the piper for their lives from street to street he piped advancing and step for step they followed dancing until they came to the river wesser wherein all plunged and perish save one who stout as julius caesar swam across and lived to carry as he the manuscript he cherished to ratland home his commentary which was at the first shrill notes of the pipe i heard a sound as of scraping tripe and putting apples wondrous ripe into a cider press's gripe and a moving away of pickle tub boards and a leaving a jar of conserve cupboards and a drawing the corks of train oil flasks and a breaking of the hoops of butter casks and it seemed as if a voice sweeter than by harp or by psaltery is breathed called out o oh, rats rejoice the world is grown to one vast dry psaltery so munch on crunch on take your nuncheon breakfast supper dinner luncheon and just as one bulky sugar puncheon ready staved like a great sun shone glorious scarce an inch before me just as methought it said come bore me i found the wesser rolling o'er me you should have heard the hamlin people ringing the bells till they rocked the steeple go cried the mare and get long poles poke out the nests and block up the holes consult with carpenters and builders and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats when suddenly up the face of the piper perked in the middle of the market with a first if you please my thousand guilders a thousand guilders the mayor looked blue so did the corporation too <coughs> for council guy diners made rare havoc with claret moselle van de grave hock and half the money would replenish their cellar's biggest butt with rhenish to pay this sum to a wandering fellow with a gypsy coat of red and yellow beside quoth the mayor with a knowing wink our business was done at the river's brink 
We saw with our eyes the vermin sink, and what's dead can't come to life, I think. So friend, we're not the folks to shrink from the duty of giving you something for drink, and a matter of money to put in your poke, but as for the gilders, what we spoke of them, as you know very well, was just in joke. Besides, our losses have made us thrifty. A thousand gilders, come, take fifty. The piper's face fell, and he cried, No trifling, I can't wait, beside. I've promised to visit by dinner time, Baghdad, and accept the prime of old head's cook's pottage, all he's rich in, for having left in the caliph's kitchen. Of a nest of scorpions no survivor, with him I proved no bargain driver. With you don't think I'll bait a stiver, and folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How? cried the mayor. Do ye think I'll brook being worse treated than a cook? Insulted by a lazy ribald with idle pipe and vesture piebald. You threaten us, fellow, do your worst, blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe of smooth straight cane, and ere he blew three notes, such sweet soft notes, as yet musicians coming, ne'er gave the raptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling of merry crowds justling at pitching and hustling, small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping and little tongues chattering. And like fowls in a farmyard when barley is scattering, Out the children running. And the little boys and girls with rosy cheeks and flaxen curls, And sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, Tripping and skipping ran merrily after The wonderful music with shouting and laughter. The mare was dumb and the council stood as if they were changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with the eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back, but how the mare was on the rack, and the wretched council's bosoms beat as the piper turned from the high street. To where the Wesser rolled its waters, Right in the way of their sons and daughters. However he turned from south to west, And to Koppelberg Hill his steps addressed, And after him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast, He never can cross that mighty top, He's forced to let the piping drop and we shall see our children stop. When, lo, as they reached the mountain side, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed, and the piper advanced and the children followed. And when they were in to the very last, the door in the mountain side shut fast. Did I say all? No. One was lame and could not dance the whole of the way, and in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he was used to say, It's dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town and just at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, and flowers put forth a fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. 
The sparrows were brighter than peacocks here, their dogs outran our fallow deer, and honey bees had lost their stings, and horses were born with eagles' wings. And just as I felt assured my lame foot would speedily be cured, the music stopped, and I stood still and found myself outside the hill left alone against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas for Hamlin, there came many a burgher's pate, a text which says that heaven's gate opes to the rich as at, at as easy a rate as the needle's eye takes a camel in. The mayor sent east, west, north and south to offer the piper by word of mouth. Wherever it was men's lot to find him, silver and gold to his heart's content, if he'd only return the way he went and bring the children behind him. But when they saw twas a lost endeavour, and piper and dancers were gone for ever, they made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly. If after the day of the month and year these words did not as well appear, and so long after what happened here on the 22nd of July 1376, and the better in memory to fix, the place of the children's last retreat they called it, the Pied Piper's Street. Were any were any one playing on pipe or tabor was sure for the future to lose his labour. Nor suffered they hostelry or tavern to shock with mirth a street so solemn, but opposite the place of the cavern. They wrote the story on a column, and on the great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted, how their children were stolen away, and there it stands to this very day, and I must not omit to say that in Transylvania there's a tribe of alien people who ascribe the outlandish ways and dress on which their neighbours lay such stress, to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterraneous prison, into which they were tire-panned long ago in a mighty band, out of Hamlin's town in Brunswick land, but how or why they don't understand. So, Willie, let you and me be wipers, of scores out with all men, especially pipers. And whether they pipe us, from rats or from mice, if we promise them aught, let us keep our promise. So enough. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.